and I'm gonna get a bat, and I wanna talk about the rear arm action, okay? Sunny night, it's Patreon, I talked about a new client of mine. He's, uh, he was drafted out of Division Three school by the Braves, and uh, I met him in Chicago when I was up there for the clinic, for the MLB clinic, and he adopted what I was teaching pretty quickly, and he's here finishing up his degree, so I've had a chance to work with him a lot in the last few weeks. So on his own, he came up with a one-arm swing drill that he does all the time. I don't know that it's any different than anybody else's one-arm swing. I haven't spent a lot of time teaching one-arm swings. Uh, I'm not against them. I just haven't used them a lot. And came back after Christmas, I think it was. Um, part of his routine included leg up, one arm, rear arm swings, and leg up, one arm, lead arm swings, okay? And the teaching point is this axis right here, the rear leg and the rear side of your body. You wanna feel like there's a turn that happens right there and that you can bring the bat into the ball without pushing it forward. That the turning of this axis and the flick of the barrel hits the ball. And it's really fairly easy to do, okay? And it's a really good feel that when you snap your hands from this position, by the way, we've talked about the vertical forearm before or the bicep, pinching the bicep, keeping it there and one-legged and coil to get a twist around that leg and then tilt, you get a real nice swing plane and you get this elbow through. And on some of the young men's swings that I saw earlier, or we talked about earlier, I'm seeing something like this. They're snapping it, but they're coming through like this, where the hand is in front of the elbow, okay? This kind of move, which forces the weight to come forward too. Instead of snapping it so the elbow gets through, and then you have this really nice swing plane from around your back uh, back leg, okay? So after he showed me his warm-up there thing, I started taking some swings off the machine. One arm, rear arm, and one arm, lead arm. Again, the key is to stay one-legged. A lot of people want to push their arms forward, pull their arms forward, or push their arms forward, and as soon as you do that, you're going to get to your front leg. But Caleb would take several flips like this and do this and hit them square. You don't hit them very hard. It's not how hard you hit it. It's all about the timing and the, and the feeling of the move. And then he would do the same with his lead arm, square them up, not hitting them real hard, but square. And then when he put both arms together, there's the feel of this arm he wants to have, and there's a feel of this arm he wants to have from his back leg. And it, he says, when I do those one-arm swings and then put both hands on my bat, he says the quickness and power that comes out of that is amazing. So I took some swings the other day off the machine doing this, and the rear arm swings really helped me identify what goes wrong when I go wrong. Now, I want to say that I probably do this right all the time when I'm right, but there's some days I come in here and it takes me a while to figure out what's wrong, okay? And I believe right now after this work that this elbow doesn't get through when it's wrong, okay? And when this elbow gets through, I'm gonna to try to show you a little closer. When this elbow gets through from behind the leg, see what's coming through? The edge of this dovetail bat is coming through perfect, okay? So I got a feeling not only was I quick and efficient, but I was on plane so true, so true. And that's when I wasn't doing it right, when my I was coming through maybe a little like this, instead of like this, <clears throat> that's when I'd be inconsistent and I would be coming around some balls.
okay? It says the lead arm swing is harder to do because you're trying to keep your pivot point, your hand pivot point lined up with your rear leg pivot point like this, but it also has to go forward to swing. And the uh, teaching point or the thing you don't want to do is to pull the arm forward. You want this move here to do most of the work and then you snap the barrel, you pronate to snap the barrel, and then it goes forward. So you can, if you do that right, you stay back on your back leg to do it. Here's the right way, here's the wrong way, okay? So all in all, I'm really high on both of them, but this rear arm swing, when I get in the, bat in the, in the cage ready to hit the machine, and I make my rear arm do this move here, snap the barrel, it's not two moves, it's not put my elbow in there and then snap the barrel, it's snap the barrel, but it's this, it's the adduction part that seems to be uh, missing in some of you and missing in me when I'm struggling, okay? We've talked about the supination and the adduction, and this adduction move has to come with a stretch of the back, okay? This elbow comes in here, I'm pulling back with my back, and then tilting and adducting, and that elbow comes through. What I'm not doing is externally rotating my humerus bone to get that to happen. So when my hands are still, I've got my pinched bicep, my vertical forearm, my swearing in position in the courtroom, when I've got that position there and stretch my back and then supinate and adduct, it feels really good, okay? So from there, I'm ready for questions.